guys, Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I'm talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And I'm here right now in the digital health studio with Amandeep Hansra. She's the co-founder of Medical Angels, which is like a network that brings together 19,000 doctors to help test digital health innovations. And in addition to that, now they're doing some investing. So Amandeep, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so talk to me a little bit about the network at large with the 19,000 doctors. Yeah. And then talk to me a little bit about the investment syndicate that's been built outside of this. Sure, Jess. Um, so Creative Careers in Medicine is a larger network. So that was a network that I started when I started to venture into digital health. So I moved away from just doing traditional patient facing care full time as a GP and start to get interested in how digital health was going to impact the future of the way we delivered care. And I wanted to find like-minded people who were also interested in the whole system and looking at how, as clinicians, we can add value back into the way the system is constructed, the infrastructure, the models of care, the technology we use. So I started that community probably about five years ago, and that community has grown and grown. But out of that community, we realized there were a lot of entrepreneurs in there who are building great digital health companies, doing startups, coming up with great ways to, to give innovation back into the system. Um, but what a lot of them were struggling with was actually getting funding to get their, their innovation, their idea, their startup off the ground. And that's when the idea of Medical Angels came about with my co-founder, Dr. B. Mian, who's an ED doctor. And um, Dr. Mian here also had a large network of doctors that were interested in investing. And so we've now carved out a group called Medical Angels, which has over 700 doctors that invest back into the health tech space and into startups. I love it. That's so exciting. And I love the way that you, both organizations that you're involved with have, have done a great job of bringing the clinician into the, like the innovation and technology process. Let's talk about the investment side of this, because I think this is just a really cool idea. So tell me about the syndicate. So it's not like you have a fund. You just bring um, different startups to the syndicate and see if they want to go in. But explain the whole process there. Yeah, so if you're a startup and you're looking for funding, um, you basically pitch to initially us, uh, the co-founders, and we, we kind of do the initial assessment of is this sort of a fundable startup, and then we take it to the larger group. And we really put it out for the larger group to give us feedback. And, and it's interesting because as um, both of us being doctors, we have certain views on startups <laughs> that we think are going to go really well. And then we put it out to the larger group. And obviously, we're represented by lots of different yeah. specialties. And people have different <laughs> perspectives. And we think that something's going to be great for, say, you know, obstetricians. And we go, wow, this is going to make your life so much easier. And then they come back and say, actually, have you thought about all of these flow on effects or this is what's going to happen to our workflow or this is what our patients actually want and we get this really diverse sort of um, I guess uh, you know insights into how all the different parts of medicine work without you know us having to represent all of them as two individuals so I think it also tells you how complex healthcare is yeah. and without having that knowledge or that input I, I really wonder how anyone else can invest in healthcare because <laughs> I'm like it's so hard even for us and we're both clinicians um, but that's really the process. And then when we get enough doctors that are interested in investing, um, we basically decide we're going to move forward with this investment and we call for funds and people put in how much they want. And then that's how we, we end up raising for the company. That's so cool. So how many companies have you invested in? Um, we've probably done about 15 okay. now. We've also invested directly into some venture funds uh, just to give some of the doctors... Diversify a of, the portfolio. Exactly, <laughs> like to, to, to do it the proper way. Um, but what we found is, you know, we... Um, you know, a deal flow is incredible. As bet. soon as people hear about us, they think, wow, it's not really just the capital that they're interested in. They're really interested in the network. Because Absolutely. you get all of this strategic advice, input, you get customers, you get decision makers in that group. And what people really value is being able to tap into the network as opposed to just, you know, money is money. And they can get that probably from other places. Um, but I think it's a strategic value that we provide as clinicians giving back to that community. You know, I want to ask about the money is money and you can get that from other places part for startups that are maybe Aussie based and in digital health and health technology. Because yeah. I remember not too many years ago, there really wasn't a big, robust investment community here that focused on healthcare. I mean, 
you guys have an investment, mm. you know, climate here that does invest in other things, but healthcare yeah. is such an interesting vertical. So what would you say about like the, the, the pool of investors? Do you feel like that's grown? Like it just yeah. generally in terms of, of those who are interested in investing in healthcare more broadly? Yeah, look, I think a venture capital space in Australia has been uh, a little bit behind some other countries. So we're, we're probably a little bit more immature in that. We don't have a lot of healthcare specific VCs here. I mean, in the US, you've got like Rock Health, you've got yeah. lo lots of VCs that will even just target a small, like we're just doing AI in healthcare, yeah. or, you know, so it gets super specific. Whereas in Australia, we have a few that are, are very focused on biotech or life sciences. Um, we haven't got to a point where we've got a very specific fund that's just looking at digital health. Um, and I'm starting to, to hear some, you know, conversations going on where people are realising the potential of digital health. I mean, you just have to come to Something sort of like a conference this, yeah. like this and you realise, wow, this is the future of health. And if you're not investing in this, you're kind of missing out, I think. And so I am being approached by a lot of VCs that are coming to me saying, we're now interested in having a digital health focus as part of our fund, but we don't have the expertise or the knowledge how do we get some of that, you know, advice cool. and, and, and um, input? And so I'm excited that they are recognising this is an area they want to go into. I'm also glad that they recognise there is a bit of a skills gap and that they will need to learn more about the health sector to invest in that space. What's the um, funding climate like here now? So like in the US, 2021, boom for us, yes. $30 billion in the space. And then the end of last year, we were about half that, right yes. back down to like where we were pre-pandemic. Yeah. Same kind of trend happening here? Yeah, or? look, I mean, I think we are slightly weathered um, in Australia. We do have the flow and effects of what happens globally. And certainly we saw valuations drop significantly, yeah. probably halved, I would say. Um, but I feel like we, we, we kind of hold, there's still really good deals to be done. And I feel like there's still, um, there's still money to be invested and there's still an interest in investing in, in healthcare specifically because it is one of those recession proof kind of industries yep. where you're going to pick something that's going to, you know, grow regardless. It's going to be healthcare. Um, and if anything, I think COVID has shown us that we do actually need to invest to create this sustainable healthcare system, you know, globally, if we're hit with another, you know, sort of crisis like a pandemic. Um, so I think the interest in health is still there, but I do think we've reset some of those crazy mm -hmm. numbers yes, we were that's seeing. That's probably good. Yeah. I, that's yeah. how we're looking at it in the States, is that it's yeah. a good thing. It's a good thing, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, what's hot and what's not? I always like to ask this yes. with investors. So, like, what, what are some of the things that your your syndicate group are, are really into, and yes. what are some things where it's like, don't even try it? Yeah. <laughs> so, look, I think for us, we probably have a slightly different bend on what we're interested in because we are practicing clinicians, and we really look still for the unsexy problems, you know, to be fixed. <laughs> so, we still want to get rid of fax machines and snail mail, and you know, we want things like interoperability work. We want to be able to, um, you know, use artificial intelligence and, and machine learning, but more for some of the back end stuff to automate some yeah. of the admin, you know, the, the stuff that we don't really want to be doing. We don't necessarily, uh, we're not jumping at it making, you know, clinical decisions yet, but I think if you can gain the trust of the clinicians by reducing some of the admin over, you know, overhead, um, then we will start to trust it for doing a little bit more. I think for us, um, what is hot is, you know, creating more efficiencies in the system, sure. giving us more time back. I think anything that's going to improve access to healthcare. So I think definitely virtual care models are interesting for us. I think what we do like also is better access to data that's oh. going to be, you know, insightful, that's going to, you know, be actionable. Um, and I think, you know, we're starting to see um, there's a lot of like, you know, um, uh, wearable data and continuous monitoring data, which is all great. But for us as clinicians, we don't want all of that just given to us. It's like when a patient comes to me in general practice and says, I've got an aura ring. Can I I'm give like, you oh, all no. of my like, pieces of data from my aura ring? And I'm like, that's great. And I love that you monitor all of that. But I just want to know the specific piece that's going to change the way that I care for right. you. So I think if you give us things that are going to already, you know, help us do our jobs, then that's great. But don't give us more and more data that's not been kind of filtered in any way. Right. Um, but, you know, there's lots of interesting, I think, the whole area of precision medicine we're really interested in. I think um, we're starting to see things around longevity, which yes. I think is a, a fascinating space, a bit controversial oh, in some, absolutely. some spaces. <laughs> but I, I am, I, it's probably more of a personal curiosity than anything else. But 
I mean, it's the general trends that I think most VCs are interested in, but for us, it's really about how do you make our lives easier as clinicians and, and deliver better better outcomes for our patients. All right, Amandeep, I have to ask about one other thing, because like you and I spoke several years ago, yes. and you had just built, started building and yes. scaling the, yes. the doctor network, the initial network yes. for testing, and then now you've advanced and you, you're investing in things. You've also got another group that you're building because you're just not busy enough. Yes. So talk to me a little bit about um, this group that you've put together to help clinicians actually yes. become entrepreneurs. Yeah, so the OSSET program, which is the Australian Clinical Entrepreneurship Program, um, this is a program that originally started in the UK, the CEP program, um, and it was about seven years ago. It was set up to basically stop clinicians from leaving the healthcare system over there and help them innovate within the health system. And so we've kind of lifted and shifted that model, brought it to Australia, and we're now running it across three states, so in New South Wales, Victoria, and WA, and I lead the New South Wales group. So we basically take um, around uh, 60 clinicians, take them out of their clinic, out of the hospital system, um, you know, briefly to help them work on an idea or a startup or a concept or something that they want to take back into their clinical world and help them to build a business around it, commercialize it, think more, you know, creatively, think like an entrepreneur. And really, it's a professional development um, program that changes the mindset of the clinician. So when they go back into the system, they're thinking constantly about what are the problems and how am I going to solve them? And that's a really exciting program. We're into the second cohort and um, it's a pilot at the moment. So hoping we can continue to get that funded. All right. Well, we advocate for the end of all piloting. If it's, if yes. it's working, just do yes. it. So right. hopefully this will take off. Well, thank, you. thank you so much for joining me. Last thing for you, I just want to know, like, what's ahead? Like, what's, for, for any of these three yeah. different networking groups that you've put together, I mean, I'd love to hear what, what's on the horizon. Yeah, look, I think for me personally, I'm an ecosystem builder. You really I, are. You know, <laughs> I want, I, I've lived in lots of different worlds in the healthcare sector, you know, the startups over here, venture capital, then you've got research institutes, you've got clinicians and got healthcare systems. And for me, I just want to break down all those walls and those boundaries and say, why are we not working collectively and closer together? Um, to really move, you know, the whole health system forward. So I, I'm super keen to see how innovation is translated back into the health system. And the only way you can do that is to build those networks and those ecosystems. I love it. Well, Amandeep Kanstra, general practitioner, also the co-founder of Medical Angels. Thank you so much for joining us here Thank today. You. I'm Jessica Damasa. For more interviews with the people who are changing the way that we do healthcare around the world, head on over to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash WTF Health. We'll talk to you guys real soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye.